Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's GoSAP Salesforce webinar. My name is Megan Day, and I'm the Director of Client Engagement here at GoSAP, as well as today's event moderator. Before we go ahead and get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's session is currently being recorded, and you are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the session, please type them into the questions tab. We will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Our presenter today includes Saeed Ahmad, Principal Consultant, Salesforce at GoSAS. He is a Salesforce Certified Consultant, Application and System Architect. For 18 years, Saeed has helped clients develop business technology solutions in CRM, BI, and collaboration domains. If you aren't already familiar with GoSAS, we are a Salesforce system integrator, and we have a purpose-built methodology for mid-site implementations, and we've completed more than 250 implementations to date. And to give you a little bit of background on our Salesforce implementation services, we offer 24-7 uh, support with our Salesforce extended team. We offer Salesforce value assessments, training, customizations, and development. And as you can see here, we have a wide variety of Salesforce implementation services. And thank you again for joining us today, and I'll hand things over to Saeed. Thanks, Megan. And thank you again for joining uh, this session. Uh, my name is Saeed Ahmed, and I work as principal consultant with GoSAS. Uh, here is a quick overview of a topic that we will be covering today. Uh, we will begin with uh, setting some context for this session. Uh, I will share why we uh, you know, came up with this topic and we thought that this is relevant to broader community to cover these topics. And after that, we will go through uh, specific features in uh, Lightning Experience and we'll see how these features uh, help improve user experience. So uh, topic today was uh, user experience improvement in Salesforce Lightning experience without writing code. So uh, in our conversation with uh, customers, uh, specifically in the context of Lightning migration, one of the questions that is repeatedly asked is, why should we migrate to Lightning? And to answer that question, there are uh, various uh, you know, benefits, uh, value that you can uh, you know, talk about. And one of the points that we uh, tell our customers is uh, productivity enhancement and a modern user experience in Lightning. And this has been, a, uh, you know, this has been asked so many times that we thought it would be uh, in the interest of broader community to uh, know uh, how Lightning Experience helps to improve uh, user experience and productivity. So that was the context for this uh, session. And when we talk about lightning migration, we typically suggest a two-phase approach. And first phase, you just enable lightning. And in second phase, you leverage uh, the specific features in lightning uh, that we will cover today uh, that help to improve uh, user experience and productivity. Okay. So here is, uh, again, a list of specific features that we will talk about today. Uh, path, this component has been there for a while, and initially it was available only for out-of-the-box uh, objects like uh, lead and opportunity, but now this uh, component is available for custom objects as well. So we can use Path to visualize your business process, uh, we will talk about actions and recommendations. Uh, you can use this feature to guide users uh, in a step-by-step -step process to complete a specific uh, business process. We will talk about new features in Lightning Flow, uh, as well as we will talk uh, Lightning App Builder, uh, how it helps to improve uh, developer productivity as well as admin productivity. And finally, we will touch on 
some of the latest features related to in-app uh, guidance and custom health. Uh, just to give you some uh, context, you know, for uh, for this session, we are targeting this session for admins. Uh, so point here is that you should be able to use these features without writing code. Uh, of course, you can write code. To, you know, if there are complex requirements, but intention here is that there are so many features available out of the box, and uh, having knowledge of these features is definitely helpful for admin community to uh, use these features. Okay, so let's start about uh, path. So path can be used to guide users. Uh, if you look at any business process, uh, at the end of the day, this comes down to uh, specific uh, activities and maybe sub processes uh, that uh, take certain input and provide certain output. I know this is very <laughs> oversimplification of complex business processes, but for sake of conversation, I just came up with this graphic. Uh, you know, if you if look at any process, for example, hiring process or a customer service process, or uh, let's say uh, loan origination process, right? Uh, you go through uh, specific uh, steps uh, that take certain input and output. And it is always helpful to visualize this process uh, in a way that your users know that where they are in, in this specific process. So path component helps you to visualize your business process. And in the screenshot, you can see that uh, on the top, uh, you see different stages or steps in your process. And then we see uh, key fields which are relevant to a specific status as well as uh, guidance or input that you can give to your users uh, so that they know that what are the things that they have to focus uh, in a specific uh, step in the process. How to configure path? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, all you have to do is uh, you define path settings in setup. Uh, only prerequisite for custom objects is that you have to have a pick list uh, field or in, in the custom object that you can use as stages. And then in path settings, you have to define key fields and specify guidance. Once that is done, you have to add path components uh, in your record detail pages or any other page that you want to add. Okay, so let's switch to our demo org and see how path component looks like. Okay, so I'm logged into my demo org and for sake of demo, I came up with a recruitment uh, application. Assuming that uh, I'm a recruiter and I get requests to uh, fill certain positions. So if I go to recruitment tab, which is effectively a custom object, I see a list of all open positions that I'm working on. Um, so I have recruitment name, uh, start date, travel requirements, uh, level, as well as at stage. So stage is the pick list field in this object that will be used in path component. So if I click on a specific position, so here you see that now we have path component and uh, in our record detail page, I can see all uh, stages in recruitment process, starting from new to identify candidates to shortlist, all the way towards uh, accepted. And on the left side, we see key fields. So these are the fields which I configured in path settings, uh, which are relevant for this specific stage. And on the right side, we have uh, text which can be used to guide users. Uh, you can have uh, you know, text here as well as you can put some images uh, to further enhance uh, guidance for your users. And if I switch to a different state, uh, you see that we have a different set of key fields and guidance for each state. And uh, if I'm an experienced user uh, and 
I don't need this information, then I can always hide uh, these details. So your users have control on it. That if uh, for a new user, for a new, you know, uh, let's say I have a recruiter in my team, and uh, for the purpose of training, I want to show this additional detail for uh, for that user. But for experienced users, if it's not relevant, we can always hide it. Okay, and if I switch to next state, uh, I don't have any key fields or guidance defined for these states, so there is no detail available. Okay, so that's how a uh, path component looks like. Uh, let's switch to uh, setup to see how this is configured. You go to uh, setup and search for path setting. Okay, so page is still loading on my end. Because uh, I have defined uh, two paths for now. Uh, one is for hiring process, and this is against recruitment object. And then I, I have another path for sales process, which is defined against opportunity object. So you have an option to disable path, as well as you can configure whether system to remember users uh, path preferences or not. To define a new path, you can click on new path button, or if you want to edit existing path, uh, we can click edit here. So let's go through a hiring process path and see how this is defined. On the first screen, uh, we specify a path name, and then there is API reference name uh, object for which this path is defined. And if there are multiple record types available for this object, we can always uh, define different paths for each record type. And finally, we select checklist field, which will be used to render uh, uh, status. In the next step, we define uh, key fields and uh, guidance for each uh, picklist value. So these are all the values that are defined in my state picklist field uh, on the recruitment object. So system dynamically pulls all of these values and these are available here so that we can uh, define fields and uh, guidance. By fields, I mean the key fields which show up uh, in the left side. Okay, so if I click on next status, you will see that this is the same guidance which we just saw in path component. So similarly, you can define uh, key fields and, and guidance for each status value. Click next. So this is a new feature which is uh, released uh, at least in my uh, Salesforce instance for the last weekend. Uh, this was available as I think a beta feature for a while. Uh, the intention here is that uh, adoption has always been an issue for enterprise systems, and companies have been trying different approaches. One of the approach is to introduce some, you know, celebration aspect or gamification aspect in the system so that uh, you engage your users uh, in to use the system. So in this uh, case, in the context of path, uh, we can define celebration. What does that mean is that uh, when your uh, record reaches a particular stage or status, uh, we will have some celebration available on the screen. So in this case, I just selected accepted, and then this frequency, uh, frequency is always. So I click finish. And let me go back to my recruitment page, and hopefully you should be able to see celebration uh, on screen. So, as a recruiter, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is that whatever candidates I have shortlisted, interviewed, and they are offered a job, they accept it. So, once an offer is accepted, that's the moment of celebration for me as a user. So, if I just click on accept it and click on the button mark as current stage, 
uh, hopefully you should be able to see confetti on the screen. So keep looking at the screen. Okay, so here is celebration. So this is one of the new features uh, that is uh, released uh, recently to drive you know, system adoption. Okay, so that was about our component. So we have seen how it looks like, how you can define it, and you can come up with you know, your own business processes to see uh, you know, what stages make sense, what key fields make sense, and how to define guidance for your users. Let me switch back to my slides. So we already talked about uh, confetti part. Let's talk about actions and recommendations. Uh, this feature was available as a guided actions, and this has been uh, renamed as actions and recommendations. Again, uh, intention here is that you can define actions and recommendations to guide your users uh, to, uh, to complete business process. So again, this is very relevant uh, in, uh, in the scenarios where there is a high turnout and you are you know, onboarding new users on a daily basis, for example, in customer service scenarios. And you want to train your users and uh, enable them so that they know what are the steps and actions that they have to take to complete a certain process, whether it's a you know case creation or it's uh, any other process like uh, you know working on a loan application or a recruitment uh, application. So again, what we can do is we can define uh, steps, and then uh, these steps show up on uh, on your lightning page. Uh, so again, two-step process, uh, you define these uh, action recommendations and setup, you create a deployment, and then you add a component on your lightning page to surface these actions. So I think it would be best to show you how it looks like, and then we can go through configuration steps in, in setup. So for the sake of this demo, I am going to switch a different application. So this is a service console and I have enabled recruitment object over here. Let me just close the existing object. So I see the same uh, recruitment records available over here. Uh, let's create a new recruitment record and see how actions will surface for a new record. So let's say I'm looking for a sales associate. I'm at a new stage. I have a commission for Fulfilling this position, star date is 1st July. This is in California, travel requirement is zero, legal status is H1, and it is level three, position or let's say level four, and home office is online. So as soon as this record is created, I see a list of actions and recommendations on the left side of the screen. So what I've configured over here is that to work on this uh, recruitment, uh, I may have to perform certain actions. For example, I have to initiate screening, uh, I have to schedule interviews, I have to email, or I have to create a new task. So all of these, actions are available over here and there are certain uh, configuration options that we will see in a bit that you can use to control how these options look like uh, what options are mandatory what are optional 
But for now, I have configured all of these four options as uh, mandatory actions that show up over here. And if there are other actions relevant, I can always click on Add button. And system will show me a list of flows and actions which have been configured uh, to be available for this deployment. So I can always initiate new uh, you know, uh, flows and actions from Add button. So I click on Initial Screening. Effectively, it's going to launch a flow. And uh, if you have worked on the flow, you, you know that we can define stages in flow. And all of those stages show up in this component as well. So this is, again, very helpful for your users to know that where they are in their specific uh, process. If I click Next on this flow, um, this is just a sample flow. Uh, please don't you know, look at all the fields. These are just you know, sample fields that I added on this flow. I go to next screen. And for some reason, if I cannot complete this flow and I want to pause it, I can click pause button and just give a reason. Let's say no data is available. Okay, so I can close this record and I refresh my screen so that I can open the same record again. So now if I click on Sales Associate Record, this component uh, shows me a pause flows. So remember in, uh, in uh, our previous example, we paused a flow, and so I can initiate that flow again by using this link. So when I click on this, system shows me a list of uh, paused actions. So I can click on this, and I can restart from the same screen where I left. So you can see that again, I'm on the second screen. Uh, on the left side, system shows me that I was at the second stage uh, in my flow, so I can continue from this uh, screen onward. Okay. So again, this component can be used to uh, automate your process in a way that your users can see all relevant actions and uh, you know options on the screen, and we can control you know what shows up in this component uh, you know for uh, for a specific deployment. You can also see history of all actions which has already been completed for this record. Okay, let me switch to setup and see how you can configure it. In setup, I'm going to search for actions and recommendations. It's still loading on my side. Okay, so each specific configuration of actions and recommendation is called a deployment. So I have created one deployment for recruitment. Uh, you can always create new deployment. Uh, let me go through existing deployment to see what options are available. So when you create or edit a deployment, the uh, system will take you through a uh, you know, wizard to define various uh, settings and properties for uh, deployment. So I can uh, specify a label over here. Then there are two options available for guidance, flows and actions. So these are the flows and actions that we just saw in our uh, recruitment example. So these are all flows and actions. There is another option available for recommendation. Uh, this is a new option which is released recently. Uh, you can configure next best action based on uh, you know, Einstein recommendations. Uh, this is a you know, complex topic that would require a separate session to go into detail of uh, recommendation builder and see what options are available. 
For sake of this session, we will just focus on close and quick actions. So I can select all objects which can be used as a context for recommendations. On next screen, we can specify uh, our actions based on channel. So if you think about a customer service scenario, if you are uh, you know, providing support uh, through various channels, uh, you can you may have a different action that you will have to perform. So on this screen, you can specify actions for maybe a chat-based uh, scenarios or uh, phone-based scenarios. For sake of this demo, I just selected uh, default. So these are the options which will be available if no other channel is applicable on a given screen. So you can select flows and actions uh, into these sections. Uh, you can also specify whether the system should auto launch uh, these actions. Uh, this may be helpful. Let's say I create a new recruitment, and as soon as the record is created, I want to initiate a flow to uh, start cleaning uh, resumes, right? Or if I want to check credit score, uh, the system can launch that flow automatically. And then we have certain options to specify whether a given action is mandatory or whether users can remove it. And again, you can mark whether a given action is pinned or unpinned or bottom pinned. So there are certain options available to control how these options look like. On next screen, you can select action which show up in add button. When you click add button, so these are all the actions which show up uh, to select for your users. On the last screen, uh, you, we configure recommendations. Uh, I will skip this part because it just required defining a strategy for individual objects uh, using uh, you know, strategy builder. So that is itself a separate topic we can cover maybe in the next session. But for now, we are going to skip recommendation part. Okay, so that's all it takes to uh, define uh, action and recommendations to add it on a given screen. Uh, all you have to do is uh, on the lightning page where you want to add it, if you edit that page, system will launch a lightning app builder. And in the app builder, you can add these components on your page. So for this uh, recruitment page, I have already added uh, action and recommendation component. So this is available out of the box over here. Uh, similarly, we added uh, path component on our previous example as well. So you know, so far we have used uh, these two components uh, for our demo today. So there are certain options available to configure how actions look like. So you will have to select deployments. So if you have multiple deployments available, you can select through this dropdown. And then you can control component visibility as well based on uh, certain uh, conditions. Okay, so that's all it takes to uh, use action and recommendations. Uh, again, two-step process. Uh, define these uh, actions in setup and then add this component on a given lightning page. Very simple, very straightforward configuration process. Okay, so we have seen a demo for actions and recommendations. Uh, we talked about uh, new features for recommendations. So this is something that uh, we can cover in maybe follow-up session. Lightning flows. A flow has been available, uh, you know, in classic experience as well. And this has been used a lot by customers in various, uh, you know, uh, scenarios and various use cases. I will not go into details of uh, you know designing flows because again that that may take uh, more time than what we have today. Uh, we will only focus on new features in uh, flow, specifically a new flow builder, lightning flow builder that has uh, been rolled out recently. 
So if you go to set up to create a new flow, you may see a screen like this. Uh, there is a, an article available from Salesforce to talk about you know, defenses and enhancements which are available in new flow builders. So you can definitely go through that article and, and you know, read it. This is how a new flow builder looks like. Uh, some of the changes here are uh, you know, the elements available on the left side, they have been regrouped. Uh, some options are, have been merged into one option and then you can control these uh, options when you are adding that element on your flow scheme. Now we will see some sample flows later on. Uh, just to show you, you know, how flows can be used in, uh, in a certain use cases. So one thing that I would like to highlight in the context of flows is that you can define templates for flows. As an admin, if let's say you want to uh, design a flow and uh, it may be a complex scenario, it may be a very industry specific scenario, and uh, you can use a template for that. And template may be available from App Exchange or from any other third party. You can you know, acquire templates. So on um, the new screen, you see an option to either create a flow from scratch or you can select uh, templates which are available in your org. So this is one of the new features that has been uh, released uh, recently. There is a new category available in App Exchange as well for flow solutions. Uh, we have these links available. You can go uh, through you know, these links and see uh, what options are there. You can uh, install some sample templates and you know, play with those uh, flows. How we can launch flows? Uh, there are various options available. Uh, let me switch to my org and we will see uh, all of these options uh, available. So I'm going to switch back to my uh, recruitment app. So I'm on record detail page for recruitment object. Uh, I created one sample flow uh, just to show how you can launch these flows. Same flow is available on record detail page. Uh, you can see this employee history verification flow available. Uh, let me actually show you how you can add it in a builder as well. So right now I'm looking at a recruitment record page and in App Builder, there is a component available over here to add flows on your screen. So all you have to do is just drag and drop this uh, component on your screen and then select flow which you want to use. And uh, this is still loading on my end. While it's loading, let's see what other options are available to launch flows. So detail page is one option. Uh, you can always initiate flows from action menu. So same flow I'm going to launch uh, from action menu and it will show up as a pop-up. And third option that we have over here is using utility bar. So if you have flows which are not specific to a certain record, but uh, you know you want these flows available for your users, you can always add those flows uh, in the utility bar. So if I click this employee history verification, I can see same flow available over here. Okay, so these are the three options available on this screen. We already saw these uh, flows that we can trigger from uh, action and recommendation component. Uh, another option available here is to 
you know, add these flows to your lightning pages for communities. We will see some of those samples. Let me switch back to app builder screen. And here you can see that we have flow component. So all you have to do is drag and drop this flow component and select flow that you want to add on your page. So very straightforward configuration. Okay. So another option available to uh, use flows is through community pages. Uh, I'm switching to a customer self-service community. Uh, I'm logged in as a customer user right now. And assuming that as a customer, I purchase a product and I want to register that product, I log into community and I see an option to register product. So when I click on this option, we see a lightning flow that is added on this page. And I can go through uh, these uh, you know, steps to register my product. In flow, you can always you know, populate these checklist fields based on data in your, or you can query user record to display user information, as well as you can query any other object. So I go to next screen and I select certain options and when I click next, uh, effectively system will register my product and will create a asset record and contact record for this user. So that's one example how you can use uh, flows in your community. Similarly, I have another example to update user profile uh, in community pages. Again, this is a sample flow available in App Exchange. Uh, as an admin, you can always install it in your org and you know, use it. Okay, this will again take me through certain steps to complete uh, my profile. Okay. You see certain options over here. Uh, we will talk about uh, best practices for uh, designing your flows uh, in a bit. Uh, but you see you know, some uh, good design practices here as well. For example, you see all the stages on the top and you see progress bar at the bottom to guide your users that where they are in, in this specific uh, business process. Okay, so these are different options to launch flows. Uh, again, based on your specific need, you can see you know, what makes sense. And all of these options are available uh, for admins. You don't have to write any code. You can configure these uh, options in uh, setup and you know, use various tools uh, to uh, configure these flows. Sample use cases. Uh, we talked about product registration. Uh, another very common use case is to implement uh, multi-factor authentication in communities. Uh, you can use you know, login flows to uh, control login experience for your users. Let's say if you want to use uh, two-factor authentication by using a one-time token or any other mechanism that you want to use, you will have to use uh, you know, lightning flows uh, to add it to your lightning pages and system will use you know, those uh, flows automatically. Uh, you can use flows for new user registration, uh, new product and item creation, and PLM scenarios. Uh, I remember we created a custom tool uh, for complex record creation, whether it is for uh, product or item creation or for case creation. And we built a custom tool for that. But now uh, you can use flows uh, for uh, for these scenarios and flow provides you a lot of flexibility and control in terms of you know how you can design your screens uh, in a step by step manner. Uh, best practices for developing flows: uh, simplify your task, don't make it too complex for your users. Uh, you know, divide your screen into smaller screens into uh, into a wizard so that your user know that where they are in uh, you know in a complex uh, record creation process 
uh, use labels as much as possible, make it visual, you know, use graphics if it makes sense. Uh, use explicit navigation. We saw an example for explicit navigation in our profile uh, flow where you see uh, steps, uh, stages on the top and a progress bar at the bottom. Okay, so we have seen a uh, demo for flows. I can actually move on to the next topic for Lightning App Builder. So App Builder is another you know, great feature in uh, Lightning Experience. Uh, this provides a lot of you know, control and flexibility and productivity actually for admins as well that uh, you can design your pages, whether it's record pages or you can you know, create standard lightning pages and use these out of the box components uh, by using you know just you drag and drop on the screen and uh, these components are available uh, similarly if you need a custom component you can either you know develop in house or you can acquire these components from app exchange and then use it in in your screen so very simple straightforward uh, process for building uh, lightning pages uh, we have certain options available here that you can see that how your page looks like in a desktop experience or in a mobile experience. Uh, similarly, you can configure you know, uh, whatever options are available for each component. For example, in this screen, for recruitment detail page, we have a highlight panel component used on the top. Then we have path component. Then we have a tab component used with certain subtabs available, whether for record detail page or related list. And then we are using a flow component over here uh, to use a flow. And I have a, uh, components used for to surface recent items on the left side. So all of these options are available for admins uh, to, to, to design your record pages uh, as well as the lightning pages. So the last topic that uh, I would cover is related to user engagement. Uh, this is a feature which has been released uh, recently. Actually, in my org, it showed up over last weekend, and I thought it would be a good idea to uh, you know cover this topic as well. So let me show you how it looks like. So let's see some sample uh, uh, prompts that I have defined, and then we can see uh, how you can define these prompts. There is a new option available in setup for user engagement, and one of the option is in-app guidance. If you have used uh, tools like WalkMe or any other tools that provide contact sensitive help, you may know that you know, these tools are very helpful to engage with users, to train them, to provide them you know, uh, maybe tips or to introduce them a new features in the system. So it looks like Salesforce realized that this is something that is very helpful for users and they have introduced this feature. For now, it is uh, it provides basic prompts. Uh, hopefully, there will be more uh, you know features under this uh, option. So let's look some uh, sample prompts that I have created. Okay, so right now I am in a preview mode uh, for these prompts. You see a new tab, uh, actually a bar on the top to uh, create and edit these prompts. And then I have this sample prompt that I just created. Uh, 
all you have to do is you have to select a screen where you want to show these prompts. Uh, for this example, I created this prompt for recruitment list page. And on the top right corner, I see a message as a user that I should try new Kanban view enlightening experience. So this is something that you can you know, create as an admin and your users will see these messages or prompts on the screen. So I click, got it, okay. And then, you know, based on this prompt, I hope that you know, as a user, uh, I will uh, try this, uh, you know, new feature that uh, uh, admin wants me to try. So I switch to Kanban view. Again, this is one of the features, enlightening experience, which helps you to uh, organize your list in a visual format where you see various statuses on the top, you know, you see certain uh, you know, counters as well as all the records which are available at the different statuses. So as a user, I can quickly, you know, uh, drag and drop these records into different uh, statuses. So this is very helpful and uh, provides a better experience for your users. There are certain options available to configure Kanban view. Uh, let's look at some of the other prompts that I created. So this is another example that on the record detail page, there is a different prompt available. Uh, in this example, I have an additional link uh, available as well that if needed, if I want to guide my users to switch to a different screen, they can always click on this link and you know read more about this option. Another example of prompt. So this is a, a doc prompt that you can you know either minimize or maximize on your screen, and here you can again provide some helpful content for your users. So to create a new prompt or edit existing one, uh, we have an option available uh, in setup to add a new prompt, or I can add it existing one. So for sake of this demo, let's add it one existing prompt that we saw in the beginning for uh, Kanban view. So when I click edit, uh, system will show me a wizard where I can go through all of these screens to uh, configure prompts. So the first option here is that whether it should be a floating prompt or a doc prompt, then we can control where it should show up. So these are all options available. Uh, we can also specify permissions uh, for these prompts. Then you can specify uh, content like title and whatever helpful uh, text that you want to show to your users. Uh, you can you know, label your buttons. In my example, it was got it, but you can you know, put any other label. And then you can introduce uh, additional action buttons for additional information that users may need. Scheduling seems very helpful that uh, if let's say you are introducing new features in, uh, for your users in the future, and uh, you want to define some prompts for these features. So you can set up a schedule that let's say your new features are rolling out from next month. So you can define your prompts in advance and specify the date range for which these prompts should be available. And finally, you can specify name and description for your prompt. So when I click save and preview, so the system will show me these prompts right away. So an app guidance is, I think, one of the cool features that is introduced in Lightning Experience. Uh, another option that is available for, over here is to customize your help menu. So if you click on this help menu in the top right corner, Now you have control uh, over this menu and you can introduce custom links uh, to you know, you know, connect with your maybe customized knowledge base or any other portal that you may have uh, for your users. So your users can always click on these links and navigate to other content that may be available for your users. 
So again, let us feature uh, to uh, you know improve experience for your users. Okay, so I think that's it uh, for this session. Now, again, intention here was that we look at various features available in Lightning Experience, which can be used by admin to uh, provide a better experience uh, for your users. Uh, with that, I would hand over back to Megan. Uh, Megan, do we have any questions, uh, comments, Yes, thank you, Saeed. We have some questions coming throughout the session, so we'll go ahead and get started with those. Um, and if you haven't submitted your questions yet and you have some, please feel free to do so now. So I'll get started with the first one. Uh, Mark asked if in-app guidance is generally available. Uh, I think this is available uh, as a beta feature right now. Uh, this may not be uh, available in all org, but I, I have, you know, at least it's available in my instance. Uh, we can always go to, uh, you know, Salesforce release notes and see what's the release schedule, but I think it's not generally available yet. Okay, great. Uh, the next question comes from Barbara. She's wondering if we can control the visibility for the path and action component component based on the certain conditions? Yes, we briefly talked about this feature. Let me switch back to my app builder. Yeah, there are options available that you can control uh, your uh, component visibility based on either permissions or uh, certain filters. Uh, so let me show you how this shows up. So in Lightning uh, uh, Builder, if I go to my path component, we can set up component visibility over here. So based on statuses or any other field available on, uh, on your record, uh, you can always control whether this component shows up or not. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Um, yeah, there's one, it looks like one other question in the queue um, from Chris. And Chris asks, can you comment on the lightning migration and what the best approach is to handle it? Sure. Uh, as I said in the beginning, that uh, in our conversation with customers for Lightning migration, uh, there is always an anxiety that you know uh, how it will impact our existing uh, users. So what we suggest to uh, customers is that you should approach Lightning migration in two phases. So in the first phase, you know, you can always uh, perform a detailed assessment to see what features are being used by, uh, you know, in your org. And if there is any custom, you know, development or, you know, custom code in your org that may need some attention uh, when you are switching to Lightning Experience. So in phase one, uh, primarily you should do a detailed assessment, gap analysis, and identify features which are either partially available or not available in Lightning, right? And the other thing that you should do is training because end user training is the key element uh, in a successful rollout for Lightning experience. Uh, change management is another part that you should have enough training and communication for your end user so, so that they know that what's coming up, and when you enable Lightning, they uh, they are fully you know equipped and trained to start using system. And in phase two, uh, we recommend start using uh, Lightning specific features to enhance your org. Uh, why we recommend this is because if you do 
both of these things in one phase, sometimes it becomes too much effort and uh, it may be too much for, you know, uh, for your team as well as for your users to, uh, to absorb. So that's why we suggest that first, you know, do detailed assessment, enable lightning, and then in second phase, you focus on uh, these specific features and identify use cases and scenarios where these features make sense. So that's what we uh, you know, typically recommend for uh, lightning migration. But that's a very good question, and uh, we see this <laughs> question repeatedly from you know customers as well. Thanks, Saeed. And this is all the time we have left for today. And thank you, everyone, who submitted your questions. And if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions or comments, we'll be reaching out to you um, with an answer shortly. If you have additional questions or comments regarding what you saw today, please don't hesitate to contact us. And in addition, you'll be receiving an event survey in your inbox today. Please fill it out so we can keep in touch and um, we'll also send you a copy of today's slide deck and recording. This concludes our webinar. Thank you again for attending and have a wonderful day.